Last week, we talked about the replication of somatic cells via mitosis, which results in two diploid daughter cells. Now, we're going to talk about the formation of gametes, or sex cells, which are found in the testes of males and ovaries of females. Cells that are going to be sperm are called primary spermatocytes. Whereas, cells that are going to be an egg are called primary oocytes. When a haploid sperm meets a haploid egg, mitosis is how the fetus is made. But, let's look now at how those haploid gametes are made. And this is through the process of meiosis. During the beginning phase of meiosis in prophase 1, the main difference from meiosis to mitosis is that during meiosis, the chromosomes align with their homologous pair, resulting in a double chromosome, each with two chromatids. Homologous means similar relationship. So the two chromosomes aren't identical, but they share similar traits. This next part of prophase is the most important step that gives the variation in sexual reproduction. The homologous pairs entangle themselves with one another. This entanglement leads to crossover and recombination events. During these events, the DNA information is shared between the chromosomes. This is going to occur with all homologous pairs. But keep in mind, in a male cell, this crossover and recombination does not occur because the X and Y chromosomes are not homologous pairs. Next we reach metaphase 1, where the pairs of chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell, and this is orchestrated again by the microtubules. Then, during anaphase 1, the chromosome pairs are pulled to polar ends of the cell. In telophase 1, the nuclear membrane reforms and the chromosomes relax. The first part of meiosis is complete during cytokinesis, which is going to result in two haploid cells. Now this next stage of meiosis is actually just like mitosis, except during prophase 2, the chromosomes do not duplicate. But still, the nuclear membrane disappears. In metaphase 2, the microtubules line up the chromosomes in the middle of the cell. Then, 
then during anaphase 2, the chromosomes are pulled apart into their sister chromatids. Finally, in telophase 2, the nuclear membrane reforms and the chromosomes relax. Then the process of meiosis finishes with cytokinesis, which results in four haploid cells. If this process of meiosis occurred in the testes, two of the cells will be female and two of the cells will be male. But if this process occurred in the ovaries, then three of the cells will become polar bodies and only one cell will be an egg. If this occurred in plants, then the polar bodies actually turn into the endosperm and will also be fertilized by the pollen. Now let's look at a Punnett square, which is a diagram that is used to predict an outcome of a breeding. This is going to give the probabilities for the genotype and the phenotype of the offspring. As you can see here, the A is the allele, and the combination of big A, little a, or little a, little a, is the genotype. The classic study that looks at a monohybrid cross is Mendel's peas, but I'm a horse person, so let's just assume that big A means a black-coated horse, and little a means a red-coated horse. If we breed two black horses, and let's say that we did genetic testing on them, so we know that they are both big A, little a, which is a heterozygote, then we're going to fill in our Punnett square. And from this, we can see that if we're looking at the phenotype, we have a 3 to 1 ratio. This means that out of these two black parents, we will have a probability of three black holes and one red hole. So phenotype is looking at the visual appearance or how these traits are expressed. But if we're looking at the genotype, then we have a one to two to one ratio. Meaning that one of the offspring is going to be homozygous dominant big A, big A. Two of the offspring are going to be heterozygous, big A, little a. And one of the offspring is going to be homozygous, recessive, little a, little a. The Hardy-Weinberg equation is a way to calculate genetic variation of a population at equilibrium. To explore this equation, we can examine simple genetic locus at which there are two alleles. P represents the dominant allele, and Q represents the recessive allele. Now visually you can see where we get our P squared, Q squared, and 2PQ from.